Hello everyone, this is Lala and today I'm going to be talking about Rivals 3 and we're reaching the end of Era 3. I'm not even going to mince words, this season is a huge disappointment compared to the first two Rivals for a plethora of reasons. While the format was actually the same compared to the two other seasons with last place going into elimination, the power couple of the daily sending in another team, Actually, in this season, they get to send in two other teams instead of one, and there was a chance draw that the three elim sorry that the two nominated teams had to go through. So that made things a bit more interesting. The issue is, we rarely got to see a lot of the format, and that was due to a lot of the DQs and the quits that happened in the first half of the season. Not only did this mean that they had to bring in more people, i.e. a previously eliminated Devon and Cheyenne, and alternates Nelson and Amanda, it caused for the pacing for the first half of the season to get so fucked up, especially with the episode count. There are many episodes where literally nothing is happening, and you didn't really get to see a lot of them compete, and it really was just a poor start to the season. And outside of that, you could tell that this was cast to kind of engineer Bananas and Sarah doing as well as they could. With obviously Vince being cast with Jenna, and they would obviously work with Bananas and Sarah. Leroy and Avery would have worked with him too, but obviously they got pulled very early on. Tony was kind of becoming a Bananas minion as well, and Camilla always worked with him. And they cast a lot more people from Are You The One from the season, where there was talk about them forming a huge alliance to take over the challenge. It never really happened, due to most of them being very weak competitively, and a lot of the DQs and quits as well. In general, it's not the worst season, since there is a decent amount of drama on the season, even though a lot of it really wasn't that interesting, and it does have a good format overall. But in general, it really doesn't feel like the epicness of the other two rivals. And that brings up another issue. A lot of the rivals really weren't rivals at all. And most of them were huge stretches to the point where most of the rivals got along in this season. And it kind of just took away from the theme and the twist. They also decided to do mixed genders here. And that might have been why some of the pairings were... Not as strong since a lot of the conflict between the men and the women, especially in this era, really weren't that pronounced in comparison. In general, it's definitely one of the weaker seasons of the era, but I don't know if it's one of the weakest seasons overall, if that makes sense. The cast arrives to Mexico, and they all arrive to the house separately, which is very interesting. They've never done this before. Apparently, Christina and Brianna, both from Are You The One Too, don't like one another, and Johnny is sick once he sees Sarah, and she just mentions that she put a bananas move on bananas, and they haven't spoken since the exes to reunion. Apparently, Nanny Block was on social media, which would kind of justify them being rivals, but honestly, it's just really lame as hell. All of the Are You The One people talk about how the challenge people hate them based on the last two seasons, and Corey is very single, being willing to mingle. And Thomas is not going to hook up with a woman who has a crazy boyfriend this season. And he's still with his girlfriend from last season. Jamie and Vince are back to play from Bloodlines. And Tony is stuck in a bed with a woman. Which is an issue for a notorious cheater like him. Simone is attempting to lead an Are You The One alliance, since they have many numbers this season, but Brendan has an issue with Christina from their Are You The One season. He claims that he has a girlfriend who is better than all these sluts, and he also just doesn't like Christina, and he just comes off as so icky here. Brianna is telling him to speak to Christina so they can get their shit together, and he ends up snapping at them, so he's just useless all the way around. They have to jump off the helicopter, and Nate refuses to jump off, which makes him look awful, and people are already talking about throwing him into the first elimination. It is announced that the season is Rivals 3, but it's mixed gender pairings this time all the way around. So the pairs are Camilla and Tony, due to him picking on her sister last season, 
Johnny Riley and Jessica from the reroll season. Vince and Jenna, since she made it clear that she didn't like him last season. Kellyanne and Jamie from their fights last season. Devin and Cheyenne from the Are You The One season. Nicole and Dario from their fights last season. Wes and Nanny, which I really don't get this one, as they don't even show a flashback of them arguing, but her fighting with Teresa on X's team. Simone and Thomas from an unseen fight on Battle of the X's 2, where she tossed a drink on him. And I did catch him making fun of her weave in the confessional, which problematic as fuck. Ashley and Corey due to the fight on the reward season. Brennan and Brianna from the Are You The One season. Christina and Nate from the Are You The One season. Avery and Leroy due to him trashing her on the after show, which he called her out on. And honestly, it's stupid as hell. But they always contrived pairings for Leroy on Rivals seasons that isn't the first since they first a feud with him and ty as well on rivals too and of course sarah and johnny which i don't even really need to explain with sarah now being married the prize money is 2500 for third place 50,000 for sorry 25,000 for third place 50,000 for second place and $275,000 for first place. Tony is flirting with Jessica about her being the hottest, and Simone is trying to flirt with Wes as well. Jamie and Ashley are getting close as well, and he- Sorry, Tony is talking about Simone being at the top of his list while Jamie and Ashley are starting to kind of just hook up. Simone loses her mind as she yells at him because apparently he told people that she wanted to smash, and she said that she would hook up with Corey if she wasn't in a current relationship. So he should not lie on her. And she will, and he would die in this house if he lies on her name. And it's ironic that she's talking about how she has a relationship. But she consistently flirts with us throughout the season. And honestly, the edit is just making fun of her during this entire segment. And while this is happening, Ashley and Jamie are making out in the back. The two of them leave to hook up in the bathroom. And, hey, get it in when you can. And the entire house ends up spying and eavesdropping on them. And it's all just a funny moment, watching them looking at them, hooking up through the window. Jessica calls out Ashley for fucking, and the guys tell Jamie that he's a bro for getting some. Like, they're already giving him some sort of prop there. Louis' back is feeling a certain way, and Bananas is rubbing cream on him, and is about to put something on his ass. And... His back will definitely become an issue. Give Me Some Slack is a daily where they have to retrieve as many skulls as they can, where they have the touch from the air to get a skull, but they could drop. I actually do like this daily, as it was simplistic but fun to watch. We do get hints of Cory being into Cheyenne, which will definitely be important for their lives. Sarah is pissed off that Johnny intentionally dropped her, but Jenny and Vince win the daily, and Johnny and Jessica are going into elimination for getting last. Wes and Sarah are talking about how Vince wants to be bananas, so he thinks that there's a chance that he will be sent in, and Wes is going on about his decade-long feud with bananas, and I don't give a shit about their feud anymore. Lori asks to go see a doctor and talks about his back and ass hurting, and Avery is told by the producer that Lori is going to the hospital, and the producer is shocked that Lori hasn't told her since Avery was just very confused. So... Leroy and Avery do speak about his back, and he does tell her that he has to go to the hospital, but he will come back, but she is definitely worried about being pulled if he is the cute. Johnny Riley really wants Jessica to go, and she's complaining about her partner to Ashley, where Jessica is spoken... Sorry, she's speaking to Johnny, and she's tired of his poor treatment and him trashing her to other people. He mentions that they have to prepare for the elimination, and she is tired of only speaking to him when they're in elimination, and they're just biting one another's head off. And he communicated this way with Avery on XS2, where they only talked during the competitions, which isn't good for a partnership. Camilla is giving Johnny advice on how to deal with Camilla. Sorry. Whoa. Camilla is giving Johnny advice on how to deal with Jessica, and he knows that she wants acceptance from him, but he just hates her. He's annoying the shit out of me. And they have another awkward conversation where he is pretending to act like they're going to do well. Liyue comes back into the house and tells Avery that he has to wait a night to see if his muscle spasm will be better by the morning. 
but she really doesn't believe him and senses that something bad is coming. Jenna and Ven speak about their options regarding who to throw in, and the conversation goes silent for a while, and he tells Nate and Christina that they aren't going in, as Vince and Jenna want them as layups, and Jenna mentions that Johnny Riley told her that he wanted to go against Brandon and Brianna, and Vince tells the pair that it is going to be them sent in. Jenna mentions that she doesn't care for Brandon, and Brianna mentioned in the confessional that Brandon has a tough time getting to know people, so he's kind of isolating himself, and that's not a good thing in a social game like this. Sarah, Avery, and someone else, I don't remember who, maybe you, I think it was Jenna, are talking about a potential showmance with Tony and Jessica, where Wes speaks to Tony about how he should sleep with her, which Tony is definitely looking forward to. Jessica mentions that she is in a terrible relationship that she is trapped in, so it seems like she's kind of using Tony as some sort of an escape, but she tells him that she doesn't want to have sex with him, but they can just hang out as friends. We then move on to Tony laying in Jessica's bed, naked, and he then walks around the room, kind of like approaching her, and is trying to win her over, but everyone's kind of just laughing at the situation. Jessica calls her boyfriend, and she tells him that the other people talking about their relationship in the house remind her about how shitty her relationship is with him. So she's arguing with her boyfriend while Tony is recapping his night with Jessica where he doesn't know if they had sex but she mentions that they didn't have sex and it's a pretty funny montage of the two scenes being played simultaneously. At the nomination ceremony, Leroy is DQ'd by the multiple doctors that he has seen and Avery has to go with him but Jenna and Vince decide to nominate Brandon and Brianna, and they are told that they have to nominate a third pair, which shocks everyone, but it ended up being with Devin and Cheyenne, where Devin felt throughout the universe all last night and all today that he is going in. It didn't seem like Leroy and Avery were close at all, but they performed solidly in the only daily they did, and they are aligned with Bananas and Vince, due to Leroy being close with them, so they probably would have made it far in the season without the injury. Of course, it didn't stop Leroy, and his luck would be better competitively in the near future, though the next season is also kind of a hard, sorry, the next season he is on is a hard season for him as well. But Avery would not be cast for another eight years as they move on to other people, and it kind of seemed like they dropped all the other Portland people this season, as this could have been a season that she would have made a name for herself with, but unlike many other others in this era who kind of dropped for similar reasons, she did get another chance, but it was a mixed bag, which we will definitely get into sooner or later. Everyone is shocked by the daily winners being able to nominate two teams, and Brianna is suspicious of Christina and Nate not getting nominated, so she confronts Christina about it, and she finds it weird that Brianna is kind of turning on Nate, since... The two of them are going back and forth, he walks into the conversation, and then he ends up randomly breaking down crying. So, Brianna speaks to him again, and he's annoyed that she called him fake, and she apologizes for calling him fake, and knows how bad she made him feel, so she sees his antics being genuine, so this kind of just blows over. So, Cheyenne is talking about how she is only cheered as in being a cheerleader and model, and Corey is mesmerized about how much Cheyenne looks like his dream girl Rihanna. They don't look alike, so I don't know what the heck he's on, and he wants to help her train, if you know what I mean, though she knows that Corey isn't good news. They are in the jungle, which is what the eliminations the season is called, or the elimination area is called the season, but the other two teams have to pull a canister where the person who selects the black skull will go into the elimination with the pair. Devin and Cheyenne pull it, so they're going into the elimination, which is back up, where they have to climb two walls together, climb to put pots into the holes in the top of these walls. So, Tony and Corey are cheering for their potential showmances to come back, and Johnny is worried about Jessica getting sent home in every elimination she has been in throughout her child's career, but they do end up beating Devin and Cheyenne. Johnny gives a toast to Jessica, despite the two of them not liking one another. I am going to talk about Devin and Cheyenne here, since there's no redemption challenge that we see them in, or redemption house that we see them in. And they're only brought back after several DQs and quits a few episodes from now. 
Anyways, Shine had a bonding moment with her future baby daddy, Cory, and then Finn really didn't get any screen time at all, but the two of them started getting along. Of course, we know that they come back, and I'll definitely have a lot more to say about them there. Everyone is celebrating at the club, and Wes compliments Simone, though nothing really is happening here. Ashley is drunk and is feeling some type of way, where she is mumbling to Tony and Sarah, and the latter gives her advice, and Ashley feels like a lonely rookie who doesn't really know anyone, and they don't really care to know her. Ashley continues to drink more, and she sees Nicole and Jamie going off somewhere, as she bursts out into tears, and she is ranting about how she saw Jamie and Nicole making out. She is told by a few people that that never happened, as they saw everyone, and that didn't happen. Jamie approaches Ashley to check on her, and she tells him to get the fuck away from me, and he is so confused. Camilla brings her into the washroom to calm her down and to kind of explain that nothing happened, as she assures Ashley that they didn't kiss. Corey has to calm Smashly down, but it really isn't helping at all. Nicole is literally going to just innocently use the washroom, where Ashley snaps at her to get the fuck out! And Nicole is just so confused. And Ashley tells her to pee in her pants. Corey speaks to Ashley to let her rant, and Nicole is not allowed to pee, which is just unfortunate. Ashley approaches Jamie, and she's confused as to why he is annoyed at her. And it seems like she doesn't even remember what happened, but it ends up with them hooking up again anyways. Simone complains to Jess. Simone complains to Jessica, I believe, about how crazy Ashley is and how she did the most yesterday. And Ashley is doing her makeup across the room, where she confronts her two women about chick talking her. Though Simone mentions it to her face, and she does say it to her face about how Ashley acted like an ass for camera time and how Ashley is crazy. Simone talks to Jamie and Camilla about Ashley, and she warns him about he needs to be careful with her, since she thinks that Ashley is playing him, and how he can't make a whore into a housewife. Replacements for Leroy and Avery are brought in, and they are the alternates Nelson and Amanda from Are You The One 3, and they're competing in the Dirty Laundry Daily, where they have to grind soap on a pole or off a pole to get the numbers, and to hang up jerseys with those numbers. The elimination winners choose the order of the people who play the daily, and this is a very sexual challenge, but it's pretty decent, though it caused people to have their bodies feel weird afterwards. And we have more about that a bit later. Nelson and Amanda is allowed to bring two teams with them to some diner or whatever, and no one wants to go, but they don't know that they're just going to a diner initially. But Bananas and Sarah and Simone and Thomas are chosen to go to a diner with them, and TJ ends up canceling the elimination. Clearly, they are making up for losing Leroy and Avery, and they want to stay on schedule. Amanda talks about being a nurse when her father went through heart problems and her mother abandoned her family four years ago, where Nasta explains that he doesn't like that Amanda just runs her mouth. The three pairs are having fun, and Wes has theories about how they are in an elimination right now, and people kind of just talk or make fun of him about it. Simone and Thomas talk about their beef, and he asked on Battle of the Exes too. He told her to relax, she told him to mind his business, and then somehow it ended up with her throwing every drink that was on the table at him, or on him. Bananas and Sarah talk about their situation with Exes 2, and the two of them are arguing about the situation, where the four newer people are kind of just watching in complete and utter awe. Simone talks about her like for Wes, despite her having a boyfriend that she mentioned in episode one. And then she speaks to Wes about what happened, and she thinks that he's playing the hell out of her. And there is a mention of his girlfriend, I believe, as well. He mentions that he never said that he's attracted to her, and then she snaps back at him for thinking that she doesn't have any loyalty to him, and it's really just a mess. They do show a flashback of about Wes complimenting how she looked in the club, and he thinks that she went so far, and this always happens to him. Johnny Wiley asks Simone and Amanda what their Are You The One season, or sorry, he asked them what Are You The One season they were on, and Amanda says that Danny doesn't give a fuck, which is true, but he was saying that to try to start a normal conversation, and she mentions that she's getting thrown in anyways. 
Tony ends up intervening. She calls Tony Johnny's co-signer. And she hopes that he ends up going into the elimination somehow. Everyone is looking at Amanda like she is completely dumb and a crazy lunatic. Camilla tells Ashley to calm down with her threats since that is her partner. And he didn't even attack her at all. So the two of them start arguing. And it's crazy how Camilla comes off as the reasonable one in the situation. Nelson tells Amanda to come down, but it's really just doing no favors. Simone is talking about how she has a torn bottle and she does not want to go home. But Ashley is laughing about it because she does not like Simone. Anyways, Simone goes to the hospital to check it out and Thomas is laughing about the situation, mentioning how no one's anus is going to send him home. And it's very ironic based on how they leave this season as a result of him. And Wes is being the matchmaker to get Nicole and Nate to hook up. Simone comes back to the house and mentions that she is fine, but it shows the flaws with The Last Daily. And from what I've read over the years, a lot more people kind of had slight injuries due to it. The cast is partying at the house and we have Nicole and Nate getting closer to one another. The guys are betting on either Amanda or Simone causing a fight and Nicole tells her cousin that Camilla is telling Kelly Ann to not trust either one of them. So Nanny confronts Camilla and it causes the two of them to fight, which Camilla denies and Nanny is shocked since they promised to be one another's number ones. Camilla then confronts Nicole about it and Nicole is actually very calm initially, but she's getting more and more riled up. I swear this is like the third time Nanny and Camilla have gotten into a fight, if I'm remembering it correctly, and Johnny ends up referencing the free agent fight. Nanny is getting into Camilla's face since she isn't going to let Nicole get attacked and Simone has to pull them away. Tony is attempting to calm down his partner and Kellyanne mentions that she didn't start this since her name was brought up in it and the miscommunication involved Christina somehow. Nanny does apologize to Camilla but she's not over the situation at all. Camilla then snaps at Kellyanne for trying to mediate the situation as she consistently mentions that it isn't okay. Simone and Amanda pull Brianna outside to tell her that apparently Nate and Christina have an alliance with the real world, specifically Vince and Jenna. And this pisses all of them off. And I don't really know how they found out about this. We never really told about it. But now Brianna is pissed off that her two closest friends turned on them. Amanda and Simone confront Christina and mentions that it was just idiots to stay out of elimination. But Amanda and Simone are kind of just railroading her. Brianna confronts Nathan in the bed and he denies it and it causes an argument between them as well and Christina walks in to mention that this is really stupid. Brianna tells the two of them to fuck off since Brianna really doesn't get gameplay since this is good and she tells her partner Brandon that they want sorry she wants to go home where he is calming her down though he is homesick himself but wants to stay because he has been a fan of the show forever now. Everyone seems to calm down in the night, but we see Amanda and Tony having a discussion about which show between the real world and either one is better. And it gets heated because Tony thinks that it's just a stupid dating show where you go through real shit on the real world. And Amanda thinks that her show is better where she thinks that it isn't fair that they should be, sorry, that either one contestant should be held against being on that show. Tony is telling her to shut the fuck up throw some bitches or whatever in his verbiage and he walks off, which completely turns off Jessica from dealing with him at all. And Camilla defends her partner, where Amanda mentions that her partner doesn't even like her. Things are about to get physical with them, but Ashley and Tamar are separating them, but it really doesn't matter. Camilla brags about her two bachelor's degrees and Amanda smushes her head back. The thing that Faisal essentially got DQ'd for nine seasons later. Simone tells Amanda to chill and Camilla calls her a freckled motherfucker and even as she's giving her advice as Amanda is crying for something that she really created herself. Jessica tells Tony to get out of her bed an hour later and she's just completely grossed out by him. It is the morning and Brandon speaks to his girlfriend where they miss one another and he now wants to leave despite what he told Brianna a few hours prior. He speaks to Daria and the latter thinks that it isn't the best environment for him since Brennan isolates himself, but this is a very good opportunity to be on TV and to be in Mexico, so he should stay. 
Brandon thinks about it and he tells the cameraman that he wants to leave, which pisses Brianna off. They are on the street and they are arguing about his decision where he told her last night that he told her that she needs to stay in the morning and how he's being a hypocrite. No one cares about his girlfriend, which Brianna mentions, as she also states that she gets why people hate him now. So they're about to do the next challenge, and TJ calls up Brandon for wanting to quit, where Brandon mentions that he doesn't like the drama, and TJ sends them both off, and says to see Brandon never. Apparently, when they are going to do the, or they're on their way to do the daily that they eventually lived on, Brandon wanted to change his mind about quitting, but... They were told, and I'm le- I learned about this through interviews the two of them did a few years ago, that says they had too much footage about him wanting to quit, and they probably went so much planning into the quit, and making the arrangements, and then obviously waiting for the people to replace them, they didn't allow him to change his mind. What I really think about is that they found him to be very boring, he didn't offer much to the show, and they already made the arrangements, so they're like, no, you're gonna quit. There's also some arguing that the two of them did with some other Are You The One people, but I don't really think it was entertaining. It's unfortunate that Brianna was screwed due to all this, and while she did get another season after this, she's put in a bad predicament there, so things were never in her favor. And thank goodness Brennan never came back, and he's arguably seen as one of the most pathetic people ever. Out on a limb is the daily where they have to swing from one platform to the next, and there are four platforms, and then ring the bell. Ashley gets slightly injured, and we spend a full-on minute with Tony and Camilla arguing after the challenge when they were doing their after-challenge confessionals, since she is blaming him for screwing her over, and it just further exemplifies their conflict throughout the season. Corey and Ashley do beat Bananas and Sarah in the daily, with Jessica and Johnny getting last over Dario and Nicole and Killian and Jamie. Johnny is over it, since he knows that he will always be in last with Jessica, and she is ranting about how she wants to go home, though she knows that she's the reason that they lost. Corey is plotting with Thomas about how he wants to throw in Nelson and Amanda, and it's funny how Corey is talking about how Thomas is his boy, but it seems like he's a lot closer to Nelson nowadays, and Ashley knows that Corey is close with Thomas, as they're all from the same movie world season, so she does want to send in Simone. Wes makes a deal with him, Nanny, Corey, and Ashley, and Wes is claiming to never make promises that he can't keep, though I'm pretty sure that's a lie. They speak to Christina and Nate to tell them that they are going in, and we move on to Ashley ranting to Kelly Ann about Jamie moving on from her, and Camilla brings up the Simone situation with what she said a few episodes prior, which includes Jamie moving on from her. Ashley confronts Simone for shit-talking her to Jamie and Camilla, and Ashley talks about how Wes doesn't want to fuck her, and how Simone has tried to suck three people's dicks, and none of them want her. I'm pretty sure she called Simone ghetto, which, eh, not good. Simone mentions that Ashley did say that she can't trust a police officer, and Simone does call her a slut. They call one another weak, and the entire house is eavesdropping on their fight, and Ashley threatens to put it in, and Simone dares her to, mentioning that Corey is the one who actually has power on their team. Thomas lectures Simone over her behavior, and she really just doesn't care. Corey speaks to Simone the next morning, and he mentions that he feels like Simone is trying to start things, though Simone mentions that she was trying to help out Jamie, who she thinks is really sweet. Corey tells Simone that she is not going in, and he has to deal with Ashley ranting, and Ashley wants Corey to tell Thomas to get his bitch on a leash, and she wants that bitch out of her room. Ashley ends up storming out, and Corey is over everything. Nelson and Amanda, and Simone and Thomas are nominated, and the two are actually shocked with this, because Courtney, sorry, why did I say Courtney? Corey is backing his partner. Thomas is complaining about how Simone is the worst person in the house, and he doesn't have faith in her, and his friend voted him in because she sucks, and Wes is failing to cheer him up, essentially. Simone and Ashley, sorry, Simone and Amanda are complaining about how Corey nominated his friend. Amanda tells Simone not to kiss up to Thomas, since they won't be friends after this anyways, and Thomas's friendship with Corey didn't even save him, so he's clearly just low on everyone's totem pole. Amanda is talking to Simone about 
that I'm going after Ashley, which is ironic due to how close she gets with Ashley, and I'm pretty sure Amanda and Simone probably aren't as close nowadays. So right before the elimination, TG tells them that there are replacements for Brianna and Brendan, where it's just Devin and Cheyenne returning to the house. Ashley and Nelson end up going in to the chagrin of Ashley, and Simone makes sure to rub it in Ashley's face. Wait for me, it's an elimination where the man has to pull the woman to memorize the puzzle that they have to hold up, and then they have to recreate it. But Amanda easily beats Jessica at the memorization part. Johnny ends up ranting to Jessica about her blowing the elimination caused him to suffer, and he really wants to get the hell away from her. And she really does feel like crap, but it's kind of just awkward watching them during their final confessional and TJ telling them that they are eliminated. Honestly, Jessica got more chances than she probably should have at this show and game, and while she seems like a decent enough person and had some moments, there was really nothing else justifying her coming back. But I know she's married to an athlete now with a family, and she's doing well, so good for her. Johnny was just very miserable and cranky the entire season, and unlike some of the other people he's associated with, he really isn't interesting or entertaining, and it seems like they're kind of over the Portland crew slash Jordan, hence most of them not coming back after this, so I'm fine with him being a gunner here. Also, Stronger Era 3 people came around here and made them both irrelevant now. So, Ashley is kind of playing matchmaker between Corey and Cheyenne, and Tony is hoping to get with Ashley now that his first choice in Jessica left for a hookup. Devin and Camilla are getting very close, and we see them hooking up. And the next morning, Ashley does hook up with Tony, which Simone narrates greatly for us, and then they show him taking off his underwear, and they're both playing it off in their confessionals. Jamie is told about it, and Bananas hopes that there's footage of it, but Jamie is completely over Ashley at this point. The daily is Lapse of Judgment, which involves placing tokens on a bar and having to do the five tasks to get their token, so the fastest person wins. I think it's a solid enough daily, where Vince and Jenna and Tony and Camilla took the wrong pieces or keys. They then have to streak naked at the end, and it seems like something that they would never do nowadays. Bananas and Sarah do win the daily, and Nate and Christina are going into elimination, though they mention that someone took their key. Bananas is speaking to Sarah about how they are getting closer to one another, and she understands why he is upset, for he mentions that he really did consider her a friend. She admits that it was a cowardly move on X's 2, but she still doesn't apologize for the move that she made, but she apologizes for putting a price on their friendship, which I think is a nice way of putting it. Bananas and Sarah make a deal with Nelson and Amanda, which I think they admit is fake, or at least on their end, and they speak to Devin and Cheyenne, where Banana sees Devin as a mini West, where Banana, sorry, where Devin does end up making a deal with Bananas, and is claiming that he isn't working with West, and I'm pretty sure this is a fake deal as well. This does cause Sarah and Bananas to want to take a shot at Nanny and West. Vince and Thomas are getting into it, and Thomas calls him a bitch during a ball drinking game. Vince literally yokes Thomas up and pins him to the table because he is tired of Thomas calling him a bitch, and he literally tries to choke Thomas. Bananas tries to lecture his cousin and thinks that it was a dumbass move, as he, but he mentions that he was clearly being provoked as well. So Bananas takes this over to Thomas and calls him out for trying to use provocation as a strategy. And Thomas tells Bananas that he needs to shut the fuck up for five seconds, as he was just not having it with either of them. TJ does give Vince a warning about violence, and to me, it seemed like they didn't want to boot a Bananas number, especially as they already lost two people prematurely. Tony and Camilla are called out for taking and throwing Nate and Christina's piece, which production watch on the footage, so they are going to elimination instead of Nate and Christina. Camille refuses to take accountability, with Bananas and Sarah also choosing Wes and Nanny and Simone and Thomas to get voted in, with Sarah blaming them for the drama that happened, though it was Vince who started it. But it also kind of just shows her hypocrisy regarding overlooking people she's close with actions, and this has been a thing throughout her entire challenge career. 
Tony yells at Camilla right after the nomination ceremony, since it is her fault that they are going in and she needs to keep it together, and Camilla has a huge meltdown to Nanny. Nanny rants to Wes about how the people he was working with do not give a shit about him and them, where she knows that her friends don't give a fuck either. Thomas ends up getting a phone call from his girlfriend, who is apparently having some issues, health-wise. Right as they are about to do the draw in the elimination, Simone and Thomas are not dressed up in their gear, which TJ notices and calls out, where they announce that they are going to quit the game, and Simone supports Thomas's decision. Wes and Annie still have to do the draw, but if they pull the white skulls, they are safe from elimination, and they do choose the white skulls. Wes does give a toast to Thomas and his family at the end of the episode. Apparently, when they did arrive back home, Thomas's girlfriend was fine, which both he and Simone admitted to well after the season, and there really wasn't anything wrong, so literally they DQ'd for no reason. Due to Thomas not really offering anything to the table, and probably production not seeing that stunt in a positive lens, I do see why he was never cast again, but he's probably the, his most interesting with his commentary and fighting this season, but it still doesn't say much. Simone was pretty fun to watch in my opinion, with all the chaos she caused throughout the season, but she really could not hold her own competitively, and I do think that they probably would have gone home this episode had they not quit anyways, so their time was kind of just running short. She gets another chance after this, and I think she did enough to earn that other chance, but as we all know, it doesn't end well at all. Tony is really pissed off about Camilla, and he tells her that he is trying not to lose it, since she does not respect him at all, and it's hard for him to work with her. Devin and Wes are taking shots, and Corey and Cheyenne are flirting a lot at the club, where Devin walks in their conversation to say that he's going to send Corey in as soon as he can. Devin does a bunch of things here, as he says that he needs to make a mark, since he knows that he'll be sent in anyways, and I also think a part of this is also a ploy to ensure a callback for future seasons. He decides to then go after Kellyanne, and then Jamie decides to pop off, which is rare to defend his partner. Devin is having some weird conversation with Wes, where Corey randomly rushes to push Devin, but they are quickly separated. Once they get back to the house, Devin gets in Corey's face and mentions that he will fight him anytime, any place. But we all know Devin isn't gonna do a damn thing. But they are separated, and I guess the gifts hindsight as to why they were last minute pairings for Rhino Final Reckoning in a few seasons. And Cheyenne yells at him for acting like a bitch. Tony is taking off his clothes to change as he is drunkenly ranting about how much he hates his partner, and they are arguing in the kitchen, though it seems like Tony is provoking her. Camilla calls him an alcoholic psycho, which is kind of just the pot calling the kettle black, and he smokes a Sorry, he slams a carton of eggs and counter very aggressively, and they are separated. A producer then wakes up Camilla the next morning to tell her that her sister Larissa wants to speak to her, where Camilla is told that her grandmother passed away last night, while she was fighting with Tony, presumably, and she won't be able to go to the funeral. Road to Nowhere is a daily where they have to get as many flags as they can before they are flying off a cliff with the cars they are driving. It's a decent daily, but we have Nate and Christina winning the daily, and Killian and Jamie getting last, so they're going into elimination. Christina and Nate are not over at Tony and Camilla not apologizing for what happened in the last daily with their token or whatever, and Camilla really isn't taking accountability when they are speaking to the couple. Tony knows that she is making their chances worse, and he tells Camilla that he's going to make her life a living hell. Nate and Christina tell Amanda and Nelson that they are probably going in, and they're trying to push the I the one thing, and the vets being friends for years campaign. Camilla does speak to Christina where an apology, as well as a threat, comes out of her mouth, which seems to sway Christina. Nate and Christina do nominate Amanda and Nelson, who calls out the pair for being weak as hell and how the vets will cut them, kind of foreshadowing things, and Devon and Cheyenne. Amanda and Nelson have to go into elimination with Kellyanne and Jamie, and the elimination is chill out, where they have to sit in a cold tub of water, and then have to create some sort of stacking puzzle, which sits in a cold... Sorry, this is really not 
a good elimination in my opinion and it was kind of just sucky to watch. But Jamie and Kellyanne do end up beating Amanda and Nelson. Amanda caused a lot of drama during, during the short time she was on the season and doing it right away. Though a part of me thinks that she was doing this to get a call back. But she was really fearless, which was also very dumb strategically, but it makes her an interesting person. I do find it interesting how no one called Amanda Ghetto when that was what Simone was called a few times, despite them acting the same. Amanda definitely got hate as a rookie, but she brought a lot of it onto herself. Nelson wasn't memorable whatsoever, and it's lucky that he got another chance to make a name for himself after this season. Especially since he really wasn't present or notable on either one either. They are at the club and Tony is getting drunk as usual, while Nicole and Nate are getting closer, and Corey and Cheyenne are having a good time together. Tony is just complaining about Camilla to Devon, who is trying to hook up with her, as she just wants to dance. They arrive back home and Camilla is also hammered herself. She is over it since she fell when Vince tried to help her and she blames him, picking a fight with him. Due to this, Camilla was already in a bad mood and is pissed off with Vince and Bananas for making fun of it as well. Johnny and Vince tell Tony to speak to Camilla as they wanted some drama and it's a gross move of them based on what ends up happening. And knowing that they're both drunk and things already got volatile with them once a few nights prior. Tony is aggressively telling Camilla to go to bed as she tells him to punch her since he likes to talk to women like this. He smashes and throws a garbage can at her and she tells him to punch her again. Ugh, the, even just saying this is just disgusting. He hovers over her and a bunch of men, even Vince and Bananas, has to separate them. She throws cutlery at him and the both of them have to be split apart by the entire house with Nanny and Nicole also separating her. Getting a drunk person to calm down another drunk person was never going to end well. Tony rants to Devin about how much he hates Camilla and Devin lectures him about where he went wrong and Tony sees to, or he seems to understand this and takes accountability for it at least. TJ arrives in the house and Tony doesn't remember a lot about it once he's being inter interviewed by the producers. TJ arrives to DQ Tony and Camilla from the house. Tony was desperate for a showmance this season and I think this was the only season where he was actively single, but most of his time this season was with the drama with Camilla, which is very ugly, though they ended up hooking up a few seasons later. Thank goodness Jessica rejected him, though he had a quick fling with Ashley as well. Camilla also had a weird chance with Devin, but her drinking finally got her into trouble this season, and with her grandmother's death, it really just wasn't a good combination, and I see why they were pulled, since a hectic male-slash-female violence situation is clearly something that they did not want. But the fourth abnormal elimination this season, within half of the season, is just utterly ridiculous. Right after Tony and Camilla leave, they start a challenge in the night, which is the Up All Nights Daily, where they start with standing on a large box and they will move to the smaller boxes every few hours. But they have to memorize a bunch of things that happen throughout that time frame, but they don't know what. It's a pretty badass daily that we haven't seen after this, where a mariachi band comes up, there's then surf tacos, someone's being chased around by another person with a chainsaw or whatever, and a bunch of other things happen and then they hold an iguana as well. It is the morning, and TJ tells them that they have to recap what they saw throughout the night, where they have to put the eight events on a puzzle piece in order. Wes and Nanny are going into elimination for getting last, and Sarah and Johnny get first place in the dating. They give immunity and to take some... Sorry, and to take the some prize to Vince and Jenna, of course, and... Corey and Ashley. Everyone passes out as soon as they get home and Nanny has low self-esteem due to them doing poorly this season in the challenges and is worried about Nicole being sent in against her. Bananas is talking about how this is the best partnership he has ever been in and Sarah is glad to finally have a friend back now and this kind of just shows her mentality which honestly never really changed throughout her career. Bananas and Vince talk about how he is going to approach Corey and to see if he is working with Dario which will definitely give some insight as to what happens with them. 
The six pairs are on a boat for their prize, and they make a deal with Cory and Ashley, which is false on Bananas and Vincent's end, since they want to get Cory back for slitting their throats last season, though Cory didn't owe them shit anyways. And Cory is eating all of this up. Kellyanne talks about how Johnny will protect his guys, but will throw his girls under the bus, and she is absolutely correct on this, as we've seen this in the past and after this. And she uses Sarah as a reference point, which also kind of just references what will end up happening to her, and kind of the both of the women, actually. Wes speaks to a few of the others about how Vince and Bananas are going to skate to the final, and Dario talks about how his plan is to nominate the cousins against one another every single time after this round, if they lose. Sarah and Bananas do end up nominating Devin and Cheyenne and Kellyanne and Jamie, mentioning that Kellyanne and Jamie have been in the bottom two during every challenge, and it's kind of the same thing with Devin and Cheyenne. Kellyanne mentions that that stat is outright false, but it really doesn't matter at this point. Nani is annoyed that Bananas didn't just say that they're using Kellyanne and Jamie to get rid of herself and Wes, and there's a bunch of complaining, where Devin mentions that they all should have worked together beforehand, where their fate's kind of just inevitable now. Jamie and Kellyanne is in the elimination, which is Hear Me Out, where people in one gender have to play soccer blindfolded where the other are guided by their partner. It is a really fun elimination, and seeing them run around like headless chickens was cool, but it is a close elimination, but Nanny and Wes do beat Jimmy and Kellyanne, where Wes tells a bunch of people, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, consecutively, while telling a few people in there that they are cool. It's just probably his most memorable moment in the season. Bananas ends up being annoyed that Jimmy and Kellyanne couldn't do the job, but they lasted longer than they should have. And we have Devin, who is a mini Wes, and Wes plotting on the cousins. Jamie did have his romance with Ashley right in the beginning of the season, but it did peter out after a few episodes, and he was kind of just there afterwards. He did ink into one or two fights, especially with Devin, but I think he's just very monotonous, and it's just boring, so I see why he never came back. Kellyanne really didn't do much this season. She did have some fun commentary here and there, and I guess because she didn't get into any drama, the producers decided not to bring her back after all. They even made her an alternate for Vendettas. But luckily the spin-offs happened, so this is not the end of Kellyanne on the franchise. Of course, everyone is at the club, and Christina feels alone in the house, while Nate thinks that they are lucky to still be in the house, so there are some conflicting thoughts between the two. Nani speaks to Cory about her deal with him, and Nicole notices that Cory is making a bunch of promises and deals with people, while never actually being direct with anyone, really. And this is clearly setting up for what's going to happen this round. We do move on to Cory getting cozy with Bananas and Vince, and he's actively playing outside of the house, where nothing is going to go wrong, and of course things are about to go wrong which even Ashley realizes. TJ takes the girls out of the house, and they are gone for hours at this point. Once Vince and Bananas leaves the table, Devin mentions that they all need to stick together to get the two of them out, and one of the five men, i.e. Devin, Nate, Dario, Corey, and Wes, will win, and they need to win to do this. Corey ends up giving a wishy-washy answer, though everyone else agrees with it. The men are taken to the challenge the next morning, and the women are buried alive, where TJ mentions that he made them answer questions beforehand. Take it to the grave is the daily, and it's a trivia challenge where the men have to answer the questions the same as their women did, and they mention that they have to move up a line the more answers that they get correct. And then they dig the grave of their partner's birth date, where the partner is. So it is revealed that Nate wants to be the third taken to the final with Bananas and Vince, which is honestly just lame as hell, but the daily is fine enough, where it is just the generic trivia, but I like the more physical elements that are added to it. Daria is able to dig Nicole out quicker than Bananas was able to dig out Sarah, so they win the daily, with Nate and Christina getting less, and they're arguing since he thinks she sabotaged him with the answers, and she thinks that is the dumbest idea ever. Dario and Cory are best friends, according to Ashley, and this kind of makes sense since they were working together last season, but Nicole is going to ruin all of that. Nicole mentions that Nanny told her that Ashley and Cory is Nanny and Wes is number two, and she is doing this so she could save Nate from going home. So Cory's double dealing is exposed. 
Daria is asking her if this is 100% true, and she does say that it is true. Wes and Dario speak, and Wes tells Dario that Corey not being his number one doesn't really matter since Corey is flexible, where Bananas and Vince aren't, and Corey is still his friend. Dario and Nicole speak to Johnny and Sarah, and he throws the Wes and Corey thing, sorry, he throws Wes and Corey under the bus with their supposed deal to Johnny, so Johnny is fine with Dario slipping in that third spot now. Though, Nicole feels weird about Sam begging her cousin, Ashley should feel weird about that. Daria and Nicole speak to Corey and Ashley, where Nicole asks them direct questions not to pussyfoot, and Corey mentions that he is playing Bananas and Vince, and Corey mentions that he doesn't have a number three. Daria and Nicole nominate Corey and Ashley because he is just of Corey's position, which is honestly just kind of lame, and also nominates Devin and Cheyenne. By mentioning the plan that the house agreed to, and throwing Wes and Corey's agreement out there for the entire house to, you know. Nicole tells Dario that he is doing too much, where Devin, Cheyenne, Wes, and Annie are all tag teaming the pair, and Dario claims that he isn't a liar. Dario tells Wes that he needs to win so he can make the decisions. So Dario won, and he's going to make all the decisions, which Rich couldn't do, and it's honestly just ridiculous, and he looks so damn stupid. This nomination ceremony is a complete mess, and Wes mentions that he's the reason why Dario won the daily. Nani and Nicole get into it, where Nani thanks Nicole for screwing her over, and Nicole mentions that Nani and Wes were the only ones looking out for her, and it's really sad seeing family fight like this. Nicole doesn't want to be under Nani's wing, and wants to make a final two, and I also think Nicole wants to make a name for herself in the challenge, which is the real reason why she did all of this. Christina is pissed off about Nate only caring about Nicole, so they are not on the best of terms going into this elimination. Nicole tries to play mediation with Christina and Nate, where Nate mentions that Christina checked out because her good friend Kellyanne just went home. Corey is pissed off that his boy threw him under the bus, so he and Dario are also getting into it, where he plans to expose Dario if he comes back. Wes mentions that Dario is so bad at the game, and Bananas is chanting obnoxiously to annoy Wes even more. Nate and Christina speak before they go into elimination, and they seemingly make amends. Ashley and Corey end up going into elimination, and they do a to be continued here. And they did a few of them in this season, and a few of them I thought were due to their quits and DQs, but it's really annoying here, and it'll be like this for the next four to five seasons. Anyway, spun out is the elimination where they have to hold onto their lifeline longer than their opponent while their teammate is spinning the pulse to tighten it. And this is a pretty dangerous elimination, especially with them being flown back and seeing how hard it is. How hard they fly back. We do have Nate and Christina beat Corey and Ashley. Literally, Dario and Devon are arguing right as the elimination ended, as Dario is happy to send his best friend in the house home, and Devon thinks that he's an idiot to aspire for third place. Vance jumps in to defend Dario, claiming that Devin did nothing in the game, and Dario is still coming off like a complete ass. It was interesting seeing a single Corey here, though he had a flirt match with Cheyenne throughout the season that didn't really turn out to a hookup here, but of course we all know that it did on the reading. He did get into a few fights with Devin and Dario, while we also start to see the start of his messy gameplay that will follow him throughout the next few seasons. Ashley had a really strong rookie season, with hooking up with Jamie right from the beginning, where that fell through, then her attack on Nicole, and I found her feud with Simone to be pretty entertaining. She did come down during the second half of her run, but you do see why the two of them became staples for the show overall. Devin continues shitting on Dario at Wes and Sarah, and Wes mentions that Dario wouldn't even have a meeting with him in real life, in one of his companies or whatever. But Sarah is tired of Wes's attitude, where she thinks that Wes not having the political power this season is really getting to him, and she's tired of him thinking that he's better than other people. And Wes mentions that he is an actual friend of hers, where Bananas is just using her. And it's interesting that he is saying this now, because he'll end up defending Bananas in the reunion. Bananas speaks to... Nicole about how Nanny is jealous of her position, and Nanny is speaking to Wes about how hurt 
she is about the situation with Nicole. She rants about how Nicole doesn't even care about her and it's really hard to deal with since she wants Nicole to do well but not at her expense and not to fuck her over specifically. Devin picks more fights with Vince and Bananas at the club and Vince mentions that Devin sucks at everything where Devin wants to see him at the jungle where he knows that he will choose the right skull. They continue rallying one another up and I find it to be pretty humorous overall. Nate and Nicole are both talking about the game and stuff, but Nicole kind of confirms the L word was thrown around, which, wow, I'm actually shocked about this. And we'll get to how this fell apart at the reunion. Anyways, the daily is catch and release where they have to swing a bag back and forth, where their partner has to jump on the bag and they have to capture as many flags as possible, which will happen in 10 minutes. Overall, I think it's a pretty decent daily, but Bananas and Sarah, of course, win again, where Nate and Christina are getting glassed again over Dario and Nicole and Devin and Cheyenne, and she blames Nate for not trying enough. They skip right to the nominations on the edit, where Wes and Devin walk up before the announcements are even made, so Wes and Nanny and Devin and Cheyenne are going in. Nanny and Wes play in Shattered Dreams, where they have to use the battering ram to smash all the windows in the wall, where, of course, Wes and Nani beat Nate and Christina. It is announced that they are going to Argentina, but one more team will be booted before they get there. I don't really have much to say about these two on the season, despite making it far, especially for people who are essentially rookies and out of all the are you the one people. Christina did a lot better here than she did last season, and while she seems nice, she was always just kind of there, so I see why she never really came back, though it didn't seem like a lot of people liked her. Nate kind of came off as lame at times, but not as lame as Brennan, of course, so he was kind of forgettable despite making it throughout the season, and I really didn't care much for his romance with Nicole either. He's just not someone who leaves much of an impression overall. Jenna is on the phone with Zach, and we get a bunch of montages of her calling him over the weeks that she was filming the season, where he stopped answering her phone calls after a while. We do see him pick up the phone finally, and he claims that it is Brooke, which causes her to freak out, and then he claims, of course, it is her. We see the current call, where she asks if they're still good, and it's very awkward, since he is annoyed with her for some reason, and she ends up crying to Sarah. And it's crazy how nothing has changed from her beginning seasons to her last season regarding their relationship, and I hope things evolved with them. But honestly, based on this, I'm shocked they ended up getting married. She wonders if she should have even came to the house, and Sarah is being empathetic to her. Devin is plotting with Cheyenne about how he wants to pull out all the skulls so he could go against Daria and Nicole, since he's still not over what they did, and she seems to agree with the plan for now, since he is set on revenge. The daily is bridging the gap, where they have to complete tasks which tied to one another or a wild type to one another, my bad, to get access to some of the planks, and it is a decent enough daily. This includes making a braid with three ropes, skipping together with one rope or whatever else. Of course, Johnny and Sarah win, and she mentions that they are friends, where he mentions that they are not Facebook official, so he is more hesitant as well. Dario and Nicole are last, so they are going right to elimination, so they are hoping that Nanny and Wes are not thrown in against them. We don't even waste any time because it is obvious that Vince and Jenna are not getting nominated, so Devin and Cheyenne and Wes and Annie are going in. Cheyenne changed her mind about going into the elimination, despite Devin wanting his TV moment to take Daria out himself. Nanny and Wes end up going into elimination with Nicole and Daria in tunnel vision, which is essentially a tunnel hall brawl, which is pretty interesting, though no contact is made at all, and the potential for danger is lessened. Nicole and Dario do beat Nanny and Wes, though Nicole feels really guilty for the entire situation and is bawling her eyes out, and to be honest, she kind of should feel guilty. I don't think Nanny and Wes were really rivals, so them being paired together didn't really add much of anything. You can tell that the both of them were burnt out from doing so many challenges at this point in time, and it's really not shocking that they took a few seasons and a few years off after the season. Both of them still had their typical Nani and typical West moments, but they kind of felt somewhat irrelevant to a lot of what was happening in the season, or they were shells of themselves. Though of course the conflict with Nicole and Nani at the end was pretty interesting. It was mainly West who was just there, but it seemed like he got humbled around this time in his life and career, which we will see for the most part from this point onwards regarding his behavior. 
The final four teams go to Argentina and they are in their new hotel rooms where Bananas calls her Chantel, which has been a running joke since the beginning of the season. And despite her telling Kim to not call her that, he continues calling her that. Vince is trying to cheer Jenna up because she does not know if Zack broke up with her, and this was before the Bloodlines reunion, filming chronologically wise. At the club, Bananas continues to call her different names, and Vince continues on with it as well, where it is really pissing her off with their actions, where he even calls her Hazel. They get back into the van where Vince is making fun of her looks, and he mentions something about her braids or weave or whatever. Sorry, he mentions something about her hair. And she really doesn't give a fuck about any of the context or the contents of the jokes, but she is over it. Devin tells Vince to stop it, and she is screaming, Leave her alone! Leave her alone! Leave her alone! This continues back into the hotel room, and it is taking her back to her education, where she grew up in an all-white school, and when she went to an all-black college, she was seen as too whitewashed. Shine is yelling about how she wants to go home now, and it ends with another to be continued. Honestly, the does come off as slightly racist because they of course go with the stereotypical black names and they're using it to put her down and I don't really see them doing this with the white girls and giving them stereotypical white names either so it really just does not look good at all. Cheyenne speaks to her mother about what happened and she is tired of this where her mother tells her to get it together and to not let these ignorant ass people get to her. Devin calls out Vince for riding his cousin's coattail, which even Banana said in a confessional last season, and, sorry, not last season, last episode, and he calls her out for being a follower, and says that Jenna was talking shit about Vince a few moments ago, where Jenna is yelling at the top of her lungs about what did he want her to do. I have never heard of Jenna getting this loud in this book with literally anyone on the show, but for her to have that energy here, it's just honestly very lame in my opinion. Vance tries to get physical and to taunt Devin, and then Devin throws a drink on bananas. Jenna and Devin then argue once again about her laughing at the antics, and Devin wants her to get the fuck out of the room, and she doesn't even know what being a sheep is. Wow. Jenna throws water on Devin, and I also forgot that he also called Sarah a sheep as well, which is accurate. It is the next morning, and all of the pairs talk about it, where Vince actually apologizes to Cheyenne, and Devin apologizes to Vince and Bananas. Note that Bananas never apologizes, and just says that's how it is, and that was him on a three. But of course, if he was on the other position, he would want an apology himself. Anyways, the final challenge before the final is an elimination instead of a daily, which is based on the draw. It ends with Sarah and Bananas going into elimination with Nicole and Dario, which is Don't whine for me, Argentina! Where they have to answer questions and then get barrels to bring back, where they have to get six barrels. Of course, Sarah and Bananas beat Nicole and Dario. So, they had that one argument last season, hence them being paired here, but they were definitely one of the more middle-of-the-road players this season. Nicole, of course, had her conflict with Nanny due to her wanting to be her own player, and the showman's with Nate that was boring as hell, but I didn't mind her as a decent enough supporting character. Dario was nowhere near as interesting as he was in Bloodlines, but he did cause for some mess and drama with his boneheaded move with turning on Cory and Devin to be the third wheel with the Italian cousins. He did enough to get other seasons after this, but you do notice that he gets less interesting as time goes on. Overall, I didn't really mind him here. The cast is hanging out in Argentina, though it is split by the men and the women, or at least during the day that they are hanging out. They move on to the final, where TG mentions that they will win $350,000 for first place, which Sarah wants to win so she can focus on grad school, having children with her husband, that she has since rec- divorced, as I'm recording this, and move on to the next step of her life. So it seemed like she was kind of just moving on from the challenge. Anyways. So they have to get a bunch of gemstones and climb the top of a mountain, where TJ also announces that the twist is that you are competing against your rival. So if you have more points than your rival, you decide if you split the money with him or take all the money. I wonder if this was planned from the very beginning of the season, or they decided this closer to the end of production. We see them wrapping wires, and Sarah is asking Bananas about making sure they are 
good if they win. And he avoids the question, which is causing Sarah to panic. And he knows that he needs to kill her just in case it causes her to have the power to screw him over. Vince and Jenna are initially in the lead over Sarah and Bananas, and the next choke point is them repelling down a 250-foot cliff, then do a memory puzzle. I really can't keep track of all the individual scores or which ones are doing better individually, so I'm not even going to bother doing it. But the third checkpoint is them running into the mines and then rearranging rectangle puzzle pieces that has the logo on, or the logo of the season. The next checkpoint has them bungee jumping and then it is nighttime, where they have to either sleep or slump, but it's based on what their partner does. It is the morning, and the next checkpoint is the eating pushing, where certain meals are worth more points. And the last point, or the last checkpoint, is them climbing up the mountain. Johnny and Sarah win the season, and he is dealing with two hymns on his shoulder, where the angel is telling him to keep his friendship with Sarah, and the devil him is telling him to remember what she did to him on Exodus 2. Vince and Jenna get second, and Devin and Cheyenne get third. Devin decides to split the money with Cheyenne, Vince decides to split the money with Jenna, and Bananas decides to take all the money from Sarah, despite there not being any rivalry and doing the show for nine years, and not knowing how much more of this he will do, and all that's based off of what he said, so I'm just repeating it here. And it is funny because while I'm recording this, he is doing challenges. Nine years later, so this was nowhere close to the end, and Sarah is heartbroken since she thought that they were friends, and she says that she would not have done this to him, where she doesn't believe anything he says now. Devin had a lot of personality in the season. He is more of a troll than Wes ever was, but you saw them get close here, and he got into many fights throughout the season, and really made the season less boring, even though he was still shitty as a competitor. Arguably one of the most and first notable, are you the one person from the show? Cheyenne definitely was a bit more subdued, where there was the front man with her future child's father, Corey, and then there's the icky situation with Bananas and Vince, but it was clear that she was always meant to be a one-season wonder, but she's a regular auntie mom now, so good for her. It is crazy how Vince is even more unlikable here than he was last season, so he somewhat impressed me in that regard. Everyone acknowledged that he was carried by his cousin, and he had some ugly moments with people like Thomas, Cheyenne, and I'm sure there are a few more that I'm missing. Anyways, it isn't shocking that he never came back. Anyways, props to Jenna for making it to her third straight final in her first three seasons, but she's pretty boring this season, and she didn't have much to do. There was the Zach thing at the very end, but she was just a ditzy girl who was kind of an enabler, though her having smoke for Devin of all people was just lame in my opinion. I know things don't really get better for her overall after this from a competitive or a character point of view. I'm going to try and keep my opinions on these two short. It definitely felt like the season was engineered for the two of them to do well, so it kind of takes away from their dominance and tier. While I did feel bad for Sarah, since she just made a Bananas move so she herself could win, that was held against her, but you can see the move Bananas making against her as a prime example of her being a pick-me, her entire career really not getting her the respect that she probably deserved, and doesn't really end well. Outside of that, Sarah didn't really get much screen time, but Bananas was horrible this season with his cousin, instigating the Tony Camille stuff, and the Cheyenne stuff, where he seemed less remorseful than Vince. And it's crazy to me that he took the move on X's so poorly where... He has done so much worse things to people, and even when people turn on him in the past and even in the future, he never has the same smoke for the men that he does for the women. So it's kind of just icky all around, and I really don't really feel bad for him. Honestly, it's hard to see that this is how Sarah went out of the franchise, and you can tell that I definitely did a lot of damage towards her, as we haven't seen her since, and it's even worse because Bananas is still mocking her over it nine years later. It is the reunion, and they start right with the cutthroat move, and Sarah really is not handling things well. She tells the audience to not clap at it, and Bananas mentions that it was the first chance he got to make a move like that, and they had a fractured relationship, so he is paying her back for Exes 2. She mentions that she made the move for her team, and he mentions all is fair enough in the challenge all the time, so he should be able to take it. And Devin mentions that Sarah carried their team, and Bananas mentioned that they worked together. So the two of them are arguing about Sarah, and Bananas mentions that he won more seasons than everyone on the stage put together. 
Sarah now doesn't want to speak, but she mentions that what she did is different from what he did, and of course Vince is defending his cousin. Nanny mentions that Bananas mended things and was propping Sarah up, but he is separating personnel and gang. Bananas mentions that he would have done it to his mother, and now he's shocked that she's speaking up now, despite her claiming that she didn't want to say anything. Sarah ends up running off stage, reveling about how this is exactly what she did not want to do, and she literally physically turns the cameraman around to go away. She then starts flicking off the cameraman, giving a bunch of middle fingers, and then threatening to take her clothes off so they won't be able to show this, and the producer is trying to calm her down, where Devin and Cheyenne eventually join her, and they are able to calm her down. Bananas is rationalizing himself to Corey, and he doesn't get why Devin, who hasn't done shit, is commenting about it. Sarah does come back to the stage, and she talks about how she was made a fool of, and she sees what he did was what... Sorry. She sees what he did was way worse, and he was just sent into an elimination where he could have had the chance to come back, and he did have a chance to come back, and he took away any chance she could have to start a new life for herself and her husband. West decides to side with Bananas over the situation, but if everyone else did it, they would be assholes. And this is one of the reasons why I don't care about the Bananas and Wes fake feud. And Wes is doing all of this, despite Wes claiming to be Sarah's friend. Sarah talks about how she wasn't liked by the cool kids and was finally accepted only for it to be false and can clearly tell that this was her pathology her entire time on the show. And it's just really sad to watch, but if you don't grow out of it, it's just on you after a while. Bananas mentioned that their interactions were not fake, and she mentions that he was not telling her, sorry, he was telling her to not worry in the final, so he was faking it at the final. Devin and Cheyenne's luck in the draw is talked about, and being the first are you the one team to make it to the final, and Vince being carried by Bananas, which is what Bananas also said is discussed, and Vince mentions that he did stuff too, where Wes mentions that it's not Bananas carrying Vince, but it was the entire house being too scared to make a move against them, and of course Bananas decides to defend, to defend Vince and Jenna here. Jenna talks about how she is not speaking to Zach, and he has been dating the person he called her by mistake, for seven months, and it does make sense why the both of them are on the next season. And Nicole does not want to talk about her relationship with Nate, where he says that they dated her, they dated for six months, but the final two months were just so horrible, and she really just doesn't want to speak about it. And I'm honestly shocked that they actually dated outside of the show. Corey is talking about him and Cheyenne, and what they had during the season, which is puppy love, and their friends who hang out. And it's ironic since it is later come out that they did conceive their daughter during this reunion. All this does led to being added that Camilla and Vince hooked up, and she knew that this being added was coming, though they both still deny it. And she ends up picking a fight with the hostess, and that's kind of just where the reunion ends. Now it is time to talk about my concluding thoughts on Rivals 2. Obviously, this season is just so disappointing compared to the other two Rivals, and I think it's just because the casting was just very weak, not only due to a lot of the pairs not really being rivals, but the competitiveness of the season really just was not there at all. And these are some of the weakest competitors in a while on a challenge cast, so it just took out all the excitement from it. Obviously, the four DQs and quits that happened during the first half of the season really fucked up the pacing of the season, where there are a lot less rounds, they did a lot of to-be-continued, and because of that, they continued with the to be continued stuff well into the second half of the season as well. And they kept on doing this during the next few seasons, which kind of added a lot more of a chaotic and an organized feeling regarding the pacing of those seasons, which we will get into in the near future. I will say that there was definitely a decent amount of drama in the season, and you can tell that during late 3 and early era 4, they are starting to kind of prioritize drama over competitiveness, and that became an issue, though it really wasn't that bad here. Honestly, when you think of the season, you mainly think of the move with Bananas and Sarah at the end, but you can definitely tell that things were starting to luster off. The real world was ending very quickly, at this point, I think they only had one more season left, and the people who were introduced on the final season would be on next season. So that was 
a casting call that was ending soon, and are you the one? While it was still successful, the people that they introduced so far, on average, really weren't the most successful, and the well for are you the one would dry up in about two years. So it would lead to some of the infamous stuff that happened in era four. But you start to see um some of the rest taking place in this season. Honestly, it isn't the worst of the worst seasons, but it's probably like in the lower either in the lower quarter or at the very end of the third quarter, if that makes sense. So probably not a bottom 10 season, but not much higher than that. So anyways, I'm definitely looking forward to Era 3 ending soon, as we have Invasion and Dirty 30, and then I'm going to do my huge Era 3 recap. Thank you all for watching this and other stuff, and I'll be back with more content soon. Take care.